Good morning. Welcome to worship here at St. James Lutheran Church Gettysburg. Today we celebrate the third Sunday after Epiphany. I am Pastor Mike. Pastor Andrew will deliver the message today. Our music is being led by Stephen Zumbrun at the organ and piano. Kay McDowell and Tom Bender will be our choir members. Jim Dunlap is the assisting minister providing the prayers of the church. John Hartzell is our reader. And Katie Clowney, our church administrator, is operating the cameras. Thank you for being with us today. If you were able to print off the bulletin that we sent to you electronically, thank you for following and praying with us. And if you were not able to print off the bulletin, we invite you still to join us in prayer. A few announcements today. So January is a fifth Sunday servant month, and we are still collecting items for the YWCA's safe house. Prepackaged food items, things like canned soup, mac and cheese, pasta sauces, cereal, rice, boxed potatoes are some of the items. There's a complete list to be found on the e-blast. And all these items, they will need to be here by February 3rd. Also, we are collecting, also collecting food items for the breakfast donations for Gettysburg Cares for the two weeks when St. James will be providing breakfast meals for those who are staying at a local motel as part of the program. First of all, thank you for your generous response thus far. However, we still need a few very specific food items. Food cups, granola bars, juice boxes, individual cereal bowls. Again, this list can be found in the e-blast if you're not writing them down at this specific time. And again, they can be brought into the church between 10 a.m. and noon each day. Thank you for your generosity. Both Bible studies continue. One is led by me on Wednesdays at 10 a.m. Pastor Andrew leads the one on Thursday at 10 a.m. And so we invite you to join us for these Bible studies. And if you have not been part of them before, please contact Katie in the office and she will provide the Zoom link. Finally, during this continued time of uncertainty, please know how much the entire staff, how we appreciate your ongoing generous support, both with your monetary gifts and your many talents. And so many of you continue to share and to keep the ministry of St. James alive and exciting at this time. Let us now prepare for worship with the, with the prelude music.
invite you to please stand as you're able that we might pray together the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search, you search us, us and, and know us. us. You, you are, are acquainted, acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, by our own sins, and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us, we exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace through the power and promise of Jesus Christ, your sins are washed away and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, you are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community, living out of Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. Amen. Trusting in the word of life given in baptism, we are gathered in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, by grace alone you call us and accept us in your service. Strengthen us by your Spirit and make us worthy of your call. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from the third chapter of Jonah. 
The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk. And he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them. And he did not do it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Psalm. For God alone, I wait in silence. Truly, my hope is in God. God alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold, so that I shall never be shaken. God is my deliverance and my honor. God is my strong rock and my refuge. Put your trust in God always, O people. Pour out your hearts before the one who is our refuge. Those of high degree are but a fleeting breath. Those of low estate cannot be trusted. Placed on the scales together, they weigh even less than a breath. Put in no extortion, in robbery take no empty pride. Though wealth increase, set not your heart upon it. God has spoken once, twice have I heard it. That power belongs to God. Steadfast love belongs to you, O Lord, for you repay all according to their deeds. A reading from the Gospel of Mark. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called to them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. Here ends the readings. But this question of fear, we're all afraid of it. And there are things in relationship to this fear that you and I have to recognize. That if you trust in God and let Him be your guide and strength, you won't have that fear. And your fear is in relationship to your trust. As your faith in God gets stronger, your fear dissipates. And as your faith in God gets weaker, your fear arises. You want to have fear dissipated and removed? Then you rise up and hold up the name of the living God and look to Him to undertake for you, and He will. It's our faith that brings victory. It's our faith that casts out fear and enables us to put our trust in the blessed Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We will worship the man of Galilee who went to a cross 2,000 years ago, and no one can take his place. No one will intercede or interfere. We will not permit it. And so it is we have faith without fear. Several months ago, I came across an article entitled The Coming Tidal Wave of Pastoral Departures. Don't worry, I'm not announcing my resignation. Throughout the article, author Laura Stevens Reed, clergy and congregational coach, defends her hypothesis that the many shifts prompted by COVID and all that has been revealed about those in congregations over the past months will result in a large number of pastoral transitions. And from her observations, 
A significant number of pastors were working under unrealistic expectations, both from their congregations and from themselves, before COVID. Throw in how COVID has changed nearly everything pastors do, taking away many of the areas, areas of ministry pastors enjoy the most, in-person worship and Bible study, face-to-face -face pastoral care, etc., and sprinkle on top the current polarization of our culture, deepening existing fault lines and creating new ones within congregations, all of which leading to increased tensions and stress. Quote, those clergy who already had some sense of discontent now have one foot out the door, and some who were happy are questioning whether their current context is still a good fit. Again, I'm not announcing my resignation. So why bring up this article in this sermon? My guess is it's not just pastors who are feeling these things, but people in the pews as well. Some of you worshiping with us today, no doubt included. That the COVID-related changes and the social, political turmoil we have experienced over these past months in our places of work and at home, our relationships with friends and family, even in our church families, have left us questioning if we're in the right place, if we still fit in where we've been, or if it's time to move on to something new where we haven't experienced such conflict. As the saying goes, the grass is greener on the other side of the fence. Or is it the grass isn't greener on the other side of the fence? Our signed Old Testament text for the week offers us some insight. From one of scripture's most well-known stories, Jonah and the whale. Like the story of Noah's Ark, a story whose fame comes mainly through its use with children. We can all remember those colorful renditions found in the children's Bibles of our youth. The giant fish swallowing Jonah. Jonah pleading with God as he stands on a tongue the size of a king-size mattress and the fish spitting him out onto shore, in the Hebrew, literally vomiting him out. Or in those versions, when the fish is portrayed as a whale, shooting Jonah out through the blowhole atop its back, sending him flying into the air before falling onto dry land. And lest we forget, that lovely song so many of us grew up singing in children's choir and at summer church camp, like the Baby Shark song. Once you hear it, there's no way to get it out of your head, no matter how bad you want to. You remember the one I'm talking about. Who did, who did, who did, who did, who did swallow Jojo Jonah? Who did, who did, who did, who did, who did swallow Jojo Jonah? Whale did, whale did, whale did, whale did. Okay, you get the point. You can thank me in a week from now when you're humming the song in a Zoom meeting. In all this playfulness, when you get down to it, the story of Jonah is far more than a simple children's story. As our video before the sermon focused on, it's a story about faith in the midst of fear, about trusting God when things get hard and remaining faithful to God's call instead of turning the other direction and running away when the grass looks greener on the other side. We all know how the story goes. 
One day, as Jonah was minding his own business, God speaks to him, calling him to go to Nineveh and to bring its people to a more faithful life. While Jonah appears to heed God's call, it doesn't take long before he runs away. He heads to the sea, hires a boat, and directs the crew to sail to Tarshish, the furthest place on the map from where God was calling him to go. Once on the boat, he heads below deck to get some rest. And as he sleeps, rocked gently by the waves, God sends a storm, tossing the ship to and fro, leaving the crew terrified with no other option than to throw Jonah overboard, for he is swallowed by the fish. And so, from the mouth of the fish, with nothing else left to do, Jonah prays. He repents for his failure to remain faithful and do as God has asked. And as the story continues, he ends up exactly where God called him to go in the first place, the last place he wanted to be. In his commentary on the book of Jonah, Eugene Peterson offers us some insight. He explains that Tarshish, where Jonah intended to go, was believed to be an idealized port. The grass is greener. In 1 Kings, we read that it was a place of great wealth, of gold, silver, and ivory. Easy to understand why Jonah would want to be there. Nineveh, on the other hand, the place where God called Jonah to go, was, as Peterson describes, a place layered with unhappy history, not of wealth and luxury, but of dirt and dust, and full of the kind of people you don't particularly want to spend the rest of your life with. Hmm. Yeah, one ticket to Tarshish, please. It's important to note that these people of Nineveh weren't simply people Jonah found to be annoying or of differing social political beliefs. They were literally the enemies, those who had threatened the lives of Jonah's people, who brought war to Israel. So God says to Jonah, go to Nineveh. And after making every excuse and every attempt not to, Nineveh is exactly where Jonah ended up. There's some truth to the notion that the grass looks greener on the other side of the fence. But there's also some truth to the notion that it's rarely ever greener. There are times when, like Jonah, we'd rather be anywhere else than where God is calling us to be. But what if those difficult places we find ourselves in, of tension and stress, of frustration, even annoyance, are exactly where we are to be? If those difficult people in our lives, those who we disagree with on almost every level, who we'd rather outcast from our lives and avoid altogether, maybe even punish, are exactly the people we are called to be in community with. While the story of Jonah bears his name, the truth is, it could easily bear each of ours. It's not just Jonah's story, but ours. Like Jonah, too often we hear God's call and head in the opposite direction. 
placing our hope and our faith not in God, but in ourselves. But what would it look like if instead of heading to Tarshish, we stuck it out in Nineveh, bearing witness to God's grace, love, and forgiveness to exactly those people we'd rather turn away from? As Peterson continues in his commentary on Jonah, he points out that at the very center of the book is prayer. Prayer. Jonah does all that he can to avoid answering God's call. Yet in his efforts, in everything he seeks to do to avoid this, he fails. His efforts proved to be useless, leaving him in the belly of a whale. As Peterson points out, a place of confinement, a tight, restricted place, a dark, dank, and probably stinky cell, the opposite of everything Jonah had set out for. And it's here that Jonah is saved from drowning, that he turns to God in prayer and commits himself to a life of service to God. Through the story of Jonah, we're called to reflect on the question of what or who it is that we are running away from that God would rather have us run toward. Of what or who it is that we are running away from that God would rather have us run toward. We are blessed here at St. James. Even in our differences, we are blessed. In fact, in so many ways, it is our differences themselves that bless us. It is through our diversity that we come to experience God's good creation and that of the body of Christ. Our opposing opinions, our beliefs about the ways the world should work, and our disagreements included. What would it look like to run towards these things, to embrace them and learn from them, instead of running away from them, to avoid them, judge them, and outcast them? Who or what is it that we are running away from that God would rather have us run toward? May we be like Jonah, authentic in our struggles, centered in prayer, and willing to go faithfully wherever it is that God is calling us to go, regardless of how hard it may be. Amen.
Together we profess our faith by using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe believe in God, God, the Father Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Guided by Christ, made known to the nation, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the church throughout the world, for pastors and teachers, for deacons and deaconesses, and for musicians and servers, that all proclaim the good news of God's reconciling love. We pray especially for the Sahas in Bangladesh, the Palmers in Liberia, the Emmaus Ministry in India, and Source of Life Ministries in Haiti. God of mercy, for skies and seas, for birds and fish, for favorable weather and clean water, and for all the well-being of creation, that God raise up advocates and scientists to guide our care for all the earth. God of mercy, for those who provide leadership in our cities and around the world, for nonprofit and non-governmental organizations, for planning commissions and homeless advocates, that God inspire all people in the just use of wealth. God of mercy, for those who are sick, distressed or grieving, for the outcast and all who await relief that in the midst of suffering, God's peace and mercy surround them, especially Kathy, Lizzie, Harry, Joyce, John, Michael, Courtney, Franz, Greg, Mark, Laura, Lynn, Linda, Carolyn, Jean, Nicholas, Todd, Sean, Linda, Jennifer, Rita, Tina, Tommy, Virginia, Barry, the Zimmerman family, and those we name before you now. God of mercy, for our congregation and community, for families big and small, and for the organizations that meet in our building during the week, that God's steadfast love serve as a model for all relationships. God of mercy, for those who mourn, by wind and spirit you call us into life renewed. We give you thanks for all your saints who have inherited your promises. Hold the family of Jay Zimmerman close as they seek comfort in the promise of the resurrection. Bring us with them into your everlasting kingdom. God of mercy, Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Our Father Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed hallowed be your your name. Your Your kingdom kingdom come, come, your your will be done done on earth earth as in heaven. heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. May God, the creator, strengthen you Jesus, the beloved, fill you, and the Holy Spirit, the comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Be the light of Christ. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God.